on real stories of the highway patrol. Let me adjust the face like this right Which side of the face? Some children are roughed up. <laughs> and officers want to know why the suspect didn't pick on somebody his own size. And then started hitting him and twisting kids' leg and making them bleed. I believe he fibbed to me again. A state trooper unravels a tissue of lies on an Ohio turnpike. Excuse me, whose fanny pack was that underneath the passenger? A tribal policeman in jeopardy as a handcuffed suspect takes his car. These are the real stories of the Highway Patrol. This evening, we join the Highway Patrol in California, Ohio, and Oklahoma. Their stories are real, shown as they actually happened. First to Stockton, California, where a CHP officer finds some children in trouble. That one over there just came out. We're playing all alone, and then he comes, he said he wants to fight us, and then he twists the boy's leg. Look Is that him? Yeah, yeah he did. Shirt there. He twists the boy's leg, and then he Stockton, started... Stockton, 623. He twists them, and then he started slapping little boys. I've got a uh, 647 that's been striking these little kids. Kids over here, they were grassy. Play wrestling, we were just grassy. Right, give me some ID. I'll give my ID, but I didn't do nothing. Then my I said I did something, but I didn't do nothing. Okay, let me see your ID. Okay. okay. What I want you to do is just lean up against the car for a minute. Oh, man. Turn around. Oh, man, you just got... I didn't do nothing. You ever been arrested before? I did. For drunk driving, yeah. You ever been, uh, been arrested for battery? No. I never do that stuff. The oh, kids were saying that you started twisting their legs. Oh, I'm sure. I didn't. We can talk to you. exaggerating. OK. So I wasn't doing nothing. Son, come here for a minute. Go over this way. I want you all gather and sit right over there, OK? Those kids weren't even in there. Hey, why don't you keep quiet, OK? Why? How much you had to drink tonight? Got one drink. Huh? One drink. One, dr one drink? One or two drinks. Uh, well, I'm staying home, though. What do you think I did to him? You think I hurt a little kid? What? Why would I do that for? I'm a Catholic, sir. I don't... Don't, don't touch me. But I don't do... Th hey, man. wait right there. What happened? We were, we were out there playing, and he started flinging the kids around and stuff by their heads, slapped the kid, the blonde head. Oh, across the face and stuff no, I told, so i told him to get off the kids and he started coming up on me like he was gonna hit me and stuff he started jumping on kids he got him on his port on his grass and then started hitting him and twisting kids leg and making them bleed he slapped me across the face like this right which here. side of the face i accidentally did that on accident you accidentally hit seven kids Accidentally, I slept, came back like that, and the kid was there, and uh, 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 a little big laugh. You see a big red mark on his face where I whacked him. I did not. I don't. I don't hurt kids. I look. I don't. Jeez, man. They were playing, and I told them to, uh, you know, I told him to get in the car. I sent him home to his house, which is a couple trailers down this way. I sent him home. And then, you know, but the guy was walking all, you know, he could, he almost fell down like four times. Why didn't anybody call the sheriff? Well, I just figured he's, he's, he's at home, like he's day. drunk, you know, he's like that every day, right? And you realize he's probably going to be arrested for battery. Well, I realize, he's just... Okay, like, and you're going to have to take your kids, I don't even perhaps, him across to court. You may have to. The kids were just telling me about it when I seen your car come through. Fantastic, what are we here for? I thought you was at the right place at the right time. We got the sheriff coming out here. Apparently, he struck your son, among other children out here. We're going to let them handle it, okay? Is that, is that good enough for you? All right. I'll guarantee you, in a few minutes, he's not going to be here anymore. When the father of one of the children came up on the scene, just by his body language, he wasn't really too happy with the guy uh, doing what he did. I think the fact that we were there prevented a serious injury, maybe even death, because uh, they do, once in a while, kill each other over that. I want you back by the car. He hey. clawed me down. Back by the car, and you stay here. Okay? Yeah. Oh, you say you've only had one or two beers? Yeah. Let's find out. This is mine. I'm going to hang on to it. Oh, more now. Okay. okay, well, I want you to blow into this. All right? Just blow into it. More. Right. Blow into it until you stop. 662 information. Well, good thing you're not driving. It's not against the law to stay home and drink, eh? 
Yeah, but you're not home. Yes, I am. My home's over there. No, you're walking out in public and you're uh, intoxicated. The cops are asking. One eight on the pass. And all the kids. Over twice the legal limit. Yes, sir. I did not do a darn thing. You didn't do a darn I, thing. I swear to God, I didn't. I got a bunch of people out here saying, Yeah, you know, I know, but kids. Uh, should I say I told you? I think you've had a little bit too much to drink. You're out here. You're. Uh, can you just keep me in jail for a night and just let me go? Well, that's going to be up to the judge. I didn't do nothing, man. You're going to put your hands behind the back. The suspect was charged with felony battery and faces up to five years in jail. He was released on $10,000 bond and is awaiting trial. The children were slapped in the face. They had no visible signs or marks and did not require medical attention. Okay, we've got a trooper here that stopped the vehicle for a speeding violation about the 57 mile post he's found on the Hal Turnpike. Uh, he found uh, what he believes might be drug paraphernalia. We're going to walk around the vehicle to see if there's any uh, controlled substance inside the car. We've had her in there before. It smells like it. I'll go back here. Here. Oh, nope. And we have cannabis. Oh, he's got it packed in there real nice and he doesn't need very neat packing. So oh, we have cannabis in here, marijuana, and a wooden box at uh, on the street. They call it dugout. Oh, we'll hand this over to you here. Yeah, definitely marijuana. You can smell it inside here. I'm gonna go through the rest of it. Here you go. I'll look for the rest of it. Only three grams. This was underneath the seat. Here. And we have more cannabis. I believe he fibbed to me again. Not again, but it's not the first guy that did not tell the truth today. Got some couple things of beer. Not open, they're okay. And we have a felony called Magic Mushrooms LSD. I believe uh, we need to go back and talk to this gentleman and put him in handcuffs and give him Miranda rights. Excuse me, whose fanny pack was that underneath the passenger uh, passenger seat? It's your fanny pack. You, sir, have a right to remain silent because you are now under arrest for possession of a hallucinogen. So right now we're going to get you out of the car and handcuff you because possession of that is a felony. Just put your, step around, put your hands on the trunk. Step back, spread your legs. Spread your feet. Spread your feet further. Step back, son. Is there any other LSD hallucinogen in that vehicle? Is that your vehicle? It's his vehicle. There's no other hallucinogens in there? There isn't. Okay. You can go through the, I'm, go through the whole thing. I'm going to go through very specifically because those are very dangerous drugs. For your health reason, when's the last time you took some of those? A week ago. A week ago? What does that do to you when you, what do you do, eat those? What's it do to you? Make you float in the sky or does he see colors or what? See colors. Yeah. See colors? Do you get numb or feel lightheaded or what? Is that it? You just see colors. You, you take those to see different colors. I don't huh? know. It's something you really can't explain. Really? Yeah. Does it ever come back? I mean, once you do it, does it like like flashbacks, they call it? No, that does. That's that's a pretty safe hallucinogen, huh? It is? I, I believe so. A bong. That's what we call a bong. A marijuana pipe. Okay, sir, you're going to be going to Lucas County Jail. You're going to be booked there. This is Saturday. You'll be, what, he'll be arraigned Monday? Monday morning. Arraigned in front of the judge Monday for possession of... Hallucinogen, magic mushroom, silicin. We're going to weigh it. You're going to be borderline, whether it's bulk, whether it be trafficking. If you got a certain amount in grams, it's trafficking and hallucinogen. And that is not a felony floor, is it? So, that's about it. Is this traumatic enough to get you off of narcotics? It is? That's reassuring to me, and I appreciate your honesty. I see colors. I forgot to ask him what colors he sees. The 
passenger pled guilty to possession of hallucinogens, marijuana, and drug paraphernalia. He served four days in jail, was fined $1,000, and given one year probation. His license was suspended for six months. The driver was released at the scene. What are you guys doing? Nothing. Besides trespassing on school property. Just sitting here. Just sitting here. Yeah. Next, three teens in a pickup truck have to answer to a West Virginia state trooper. You guys take your hands out of your pockets while I'm talking to you, all right? Ma'am, hold right there. I need your car. Get out. I need your car. Coming up, a suspect steals a patrol car and leads tribal police into a dangerous pursuit. I'm the man. Ah, got somebody on the parking lot over here. We'll run in and check it out. It might be, it's like some, well, he just threw his can down. Let's go ahead and check into that. Maybe they might be drinking or something. You never can tell. What are you guys doing? Nothing. Besides trespassing on school property. Just sitting here. Just sitting here? Yeah. Yes, sir. Which one of y'all threw that can down back there? I did. You want to go get it or you want to take it? No, I'll go get it. I thought you might. Right. How old are you fellas? I'm 16. 16. I'm 16. You're 16? I'm 17. Where'd you get your beer? Uh, down the road. Some guy bought it for us. Who? Some guy. Who? I don't know who. Well, you don't know? What'd you just give him money? And yeah. Some perfect stranger you give money to? Yeah, we just asked. Is this all you got? You got more in the truck? No. Why you step out? Go back there and get that can. How much you had to drink? Just a beer. Just a beer? Yes, sir. How much do you have to drink before I can arrest you for drunk driving? Excuse me? How much would you have to drink before I could arrest you for drunk driving? Point ten or point eight. How many beers is that? One or two, two. I don't know. Different for everybody, ain't it? You think you're safe to drive? Yes, sir. You guys take your hands out of your pockets while I'm talking to you, all right? How far do I see you drive? Maybe 50 foot? You realize I can arrest you for that, right? Yes, sir. You know how long it'll be before you got your license back? Yes, sir. It'll be 21. You'd be out of high school? probably have a job, but your mom and dad have to drive you, wouldn't they? Next time I catch you, I'm gonna arrest you. All right? It goes the same for both of you. I'll arrest you and take you to mom and dad. All right? Uh -huh. There's plenty of things to do besides being out here drinking. Y'all ought to be chasing girls or something. Right? Yes. You got a girlfriend? Working on it. Working on it. <laughs> you ain't working too hard if you're out drinking beer. The next time you throw a beer can down, that's it, bud. Okay. All right? Yeah. That's expensive, too. Yeah. Can't be on school property. You're trespassing right now. Okay. Get out of here. The driver passed a field sobriety test and was given a warning by the trooper. Nine days after this incident, a new state law went into effect lowering the legal alcohol limit for juveniles from 0.10 to 0.02. Our next story is told by an officer in the Potawatomi Tribal Police who patrols the highways in that Native American reservation in Oklahoma. Officer Chris Hurley finds himself in great jeopardy as he pursues a suspected drunk driver. Chris Hurley, a Potawatomi Tribal Police Officer for two years, is one of six officers covering four counties and five tribal areas. He uses his own car outfitted as a patrol vehicle. Dick Simmons and Mark Burroughs have been friends through high school, where they both played varsity football. Since then, their lives have gone downhill. That's better. Little hair of the dog, huh? That's what they ought to call you, little hairball of the dog. <laughs> yeah. Simmons has spent two years in prison for receiving stolen property. Burroughs has a prior arrest for assault with a deadly weapon. 
Now they're in the middle of an all-day drinking binge. vanish in a cloud of dust kicked up on the back road. But Hurley sees fresh tire tracks leading into a pasture. The suspect's car runs into a hidden tree stump, leaving it disabled. Freeze, don't move. Give me your right arm. Hey, don't go check on my buddy, man. I think he's hurt. Just get in the car. Don't worry about it. Let me see your hands. You in the car, let me see your hands. The other suspect is knocked unconscious in the crash. A fugitive in control of an officer's car and heading straight for him when we come back. Officer Chris Hurley of the Potawatomi Tribal Police chases a suspected drunk driver into a pasture. Freeze, don't move. Let me see your hands. You in the car, let me see your hands. The man escapes custody, and even though hit by gunfire, won't stop. Ma'am, police officer, hold it right there. Stop. Ma'am, hold right there. I need your car. Get out. I need your car. Get out. I've got a man in my car. My police car just stole it. Move out of the way, please. Thank you. Officer Hurley realizes his service rifle is still in his patrol car. The officer soon catches up. The chase leads into another field where the officer tries to cut him off. Get out of the car! Backup arrives, but Officer Hurley, knowing the gunman could reach for the rifle at any moment, takes no chances. Cover me, Chuck. My rifle's still in the car. The driver was convicted of assault with a deadly weapon and escaped and was sentenced to 20 years in state prison. The passenger was found guilty of public intoxication and fined $150. Chris Hurley is now a reserve officer in the Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Office. He's married and has three children. ...presents a special challenge. You should always reduce your speed and leave extra room between you and the cars ahead. When water gathers on the surface of the road, you may experience hydroplaning. When this happens, your tires begin to lose contact with the road and ride on a film of water. Your car is, in effect, water skiing. When this happens, you will probably notice that your vehicle does not respond to steering. Here's what to do to avoid losing control. First, ease your foot off the accelerator and slow down until you regain traction. Avoid making any sudden or sharp turns or braking hard, since this can cause you to go into an uncontrolled skid. Check the rest of your lights here, ma'am. If you hit your brakes for me, and then try your signals each way. You'll need to have your key on for that, probably. Go ahead, try your brakes. Okay, try your left signal. 
Turn your right. Hey, you want to try your left one again, please? Okay, in the right. Okay. Beep your horn once. Do that again. Her uh, horn works by pulling back on the steering wheel. Whatever works. From the men and women of the Highway Patrol and State Police Agencies of America, thank you for watching.